Good afternoon. It's uh, the end of the week here at KASB. It's been a busy week. I'm Brian Jordan, Deputy Director of uh, Kansas Association of School Boards. And I'm Angie Stahlbalmer. I'm Assistant Executive Director for Legal Services. So we're going to give you an update on some things that have happened over the course of the last 24 hours. Uh, as we were putting our notes together for today's session, uh, we were kind of, it, there was a, a pattern that's emerged here and we're starting to feel like there's some things that we've uh, been able to repeat over the course of the week. So for us, that's kind of an indication that maybe uh, some things have, are, are getting out there that people need to know and, and there's not a lot of you know, news breaking or, or spur of the moment kind of information breaking. So with that, we're going to jump in, talk a little bit about reminders. Uh, we have kind of a three week timeline that's been laid out for us. Uh, this is the, the week that, dis, that districts were supposed to close buildings down and do a deep cleaning on those buildings. Next week, uh, districts are supposed to start to bring staff together. Uh, and that when we say bring staff together, they have to obviously comply by the, uh, the, the rules of no more than 10 people in a location uh, and, and do some planning work. And we found out yesterday what that planning work should be centered on. There were some guidelines put out around the uh, continuous learning task force or put out by the continuous learning task force so as your staff's coming together there's some great information inside that that guide that's been put out around how to have the staff work together what things they should be focusing on what questions they should be asking as they prepare for providing services for their students then the then the following week after that which is a week of March 30th uh, that would be the first week that we could expect to see some type of supports coming out for kids uh, and starting to get them back into some routine of school and, and some of that instruction. And we can't emphasize enough that every school district is going to go about that process slightly different based on resources, based on structure of your district, uh, and, and based on uh, capacity, uh, not only from a resource standpoint, but also from possibly a technology standpoint. So we also found out some news in the last 24 hours or some news was confirmed around some state assessments. Absolutely. So this is hot off the presses. We know that the U.S. Department of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos has put out information saying that they are going to allow waivers to any mandatory testing. So assessments that are required by the federal government do not have to happen as has been done in past years. They will allow the state, and it is the state, not individual school districts from what we can tell, to apply for waivers to allow them to get out of that and to allow them to not consider that data or the lack thereof in, in determining if they're meeting federal requirements. Yeah, part of the thinking on that is uh, state assessments cannot be administered uh, in a virtual manner. So even, even if you're in a virtual school, you have to go on site to physically take a state assessment. And looking, looking ahead in the next couple of weeks, next few weeks, we know that there's going to be a lot of uh, support provided for students uh, in an online platform. Uh, and so that on-site testing isn't going to be possible. Right. Um, so some other information that, that's pertinent to your local communities, uh, we got an update today from Amanda uh, Peterson with the uh, Kansas Department of Education. Uh, she talked a little bit about child care facilities and gave us an update around uh, your licensed child care facilities, meaning licensed through KDHE, uh, should be open unless they've been closed by the county. Uh, they're trying to comply with the numbers of, of students or kids in a, in a location uh, as best as they can. And kind of the thinking or the rationale behind that is uh, we have people that perform essential functions in all of our communities across the state. And having child care for those is critical for those essential functions to continue to happen. Another layer to that is, and this is more pertinent to school boards directly, is if you host a KDHE licensed child care uh, facility in one of your schools, um, you need to make sure that you're trying to continue to operate that. Of course, your local county health department plays into whether or not that can stay open, uh, but there are some layers there that you need to go through to make sure that that stays functioning if you're trying to reopen that. So check with your local county health department. KDHE also needs to be aware of, of what you're trying to accomplish there. And then, of course, the school board, because it is their facility, needs to be made aware uh, that that is being reopened or that that is uh, continuing to operate. Uh, what else have we learned about COMA? That's been a lot of discussion from boards around the state. What do we need to do to comply with COMA? Sure. So other breaking news is that we heard just this afternoon that the Kansas Attorney General's Office has put 
more information out with regard to what coma compliance is going to look like in this state of emergency. So uh, they did leave open the possibility that the governor could suspend aspects of coma, but for right now that has not happened. What we can tell you that's a little bit different than what Brian and I have discussed with you in the last few updates is that it does look like we'll be able to, if you choose to, conduct your meetings totally virtually and not having a location for people to come to. Uh, now you still need to do what you can to ensure that individuals can either call in, you know, if you're even using a Zoom platform for example, your people have to be able to call in um, and be able to listen to that. Obviously you could sti still, if your county health department will allow you to open your facilities, allow people in small groups as mm -hmm. we've discussed those requirements to come in, but there are some, there is some give in that. We want you to look for that information. We have that and, and I believe we'll tell you a little bit later where you can access the Attorney General's information because it is very specific. We need to do more in the way of letting our people know, and by our people, I, I'm trying to say our, our board members, our patrons, our parents, our community know how we will be conducting board business. So that's a big deal. Let them know how they can access it, especially if you're not going to do it in the traditional ways. It will also mean that as you're conducting the, the business of the board, if they can only hear you, uh, board members need to be mindful that they have to, and this is part of what the AG's office said, you, you have to identify yourself as you vote. For those that are just listening in to know who's taking action, we have to announce the final vote at the end. So there's going to be a little bit of different um, extra steps that we're not used to. So look to our website mm -hmm. and the Attorney General's website for that information. And we're actually putting together uh, more detailed information around some of the Attorney General's recommendations, uh, as well as some other legal matters uh, over on our website. If, if you are a member of KASB, you can log into the member portal and that, act, that information should be coming up here in the next 24 to 48 hours. We're going to uh, get some of that recorded so you can access that at, at your own convenience. Uh, some other work that's happening in your districts right now, uh, your, your school administrators, your superintendent, your lead teachers, they're working through the process of putting together that continuous learning plan. That continuous learning plan is going to be part of a waiver process uh, that is being developed as we speak. Uh, they're hoping to have that out no later than the end of the day Monday. That waiver will need to be completed by your district administration and given to the board for approval prior to April 8th. It has to be into the State Department of Education by April 8th. The parts that are in that waiver include uh, assurances around paying your, your hourly employees through the end of the year, assurances around providing uh, a continual plan of study, and then the actual plan of study is part of that waiver. And that plan of study is, if you want to look at what that entails, you can go over to KSD's website. They have the guidance that's been given by that continuous learning uh, task force, uh, and you'll have a pretty good sense of what they're going to be asking folks in that waiver process. Really, it just it, it's asking leaders to spell out, okay, how are you going to provide access for students? Uh, what are the different platforms that you're going to use or the means that you're going to use? How are you going to keep families in the loop? Uh, those are key questions that are asked within that waiver process. Again, I, I'll emphasize that that uh, will be due to the Kansas State Department of Education by April 8th, and we had some questions today. If we get the board meeting on April 8th, if we had the board meeting on April 8th that evening, can we get it to KSD by the end of the by midnight that night? And they said absolutely. The reason April 8th is so critical is the State Board of Education meets the next week, and they need to have all of those in hand or ready to show the State Board of Education so that they can act on those. If you don't get it in by that April 8th deadline, then you're up against a, a waiting period for the State Board to reassemble. Every school district's waiver will be posted on the State Department of Education's website once those have been approved. So uh, that'll be something here in the next few weeks that you'll be able to pull up and look at. Uh, again, I can't emphasize enough how different those will look based on your district, your demographics, your resources, uh, and the characteristics of your district. Right. And, and during the superintendent's meeting today, they did clarify there is some misinformation out there with regard to rural telecommunications. Uh, and, and essentially, and I don't know if it came from us, who knows where it came from, but what they wanted to let people know was that 
there's no one really offering free internet at this point that we're aware of. So what they're looking at is reduced rates. They're trying to you know improve connectivity and and make speeds faster and those types of things. But don't expect your local rural internet providers to be offering anything completely free. Right. So that your district just needs to work with their local providers and do what they can to identify families that need those services. Yeah. So I think this kind of brings us to an end of, of the updates that we've heard over the last 24 hours. Um, this has been uh, kind of un, you know, uncertain times that we've lived through over the last week. Uh, I know myself and Angie both have kids that are, being, that are impacted by uh, the school closure and I can't, I can't thank the groups enough that have worked together and collaborated around the state uh, to try to get kids back into some kind of an educational setting or get the educational support that they need. We still have a long ways to go till that's up and running, uh, but our school districts that are working hard, our state department of education has been working hard and it's been pretty neat to see from a parent perspective the amount of collaboration uh, that we're seeing across the state to get Kansas kids what they need to be successful. Absolutely. I can't say it any better. So All right. thank you for your time. And, and we will be probably putting a pin in these updates, I believe, for a time. Uh, we had a discussion. We don't want to, to you know keep giving you information that you already have. So we're just going to suspend these, I believe, from this point until it's on an as-needed right. basis, and we'll certainly mm -hmm. let you know. For board members and superintendents that are out there listening, we will be providing more specific information to your roles and your functions within the district over on our website. Uh, you can log into the member portal and we'll, we'll push out information via email uh, to try to keep you up to date. Right, and our Legal Assistance Fund members, we're going to start packing that portion of the website with a lot more legal information and advice. Um, we have Luke working on frequently asked questions. We're going to do what we can to break down the new federal laws and so just use those resources. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you.